you are still watching Wave. Single Working Women's Day was created by Barbara Payne with the intent of recognizing the importance of these women and raising awareness of these facts in the public eye. Their role has grown ever more important as being a single woman is no longer a stigma in many countries and instead is often encouraged or respected as these individuals work their way through life on their own. I like that last part. On their own. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. <laughs> Thankfully, we're all single ladies here. So happy Single Women's Working Day to you all. Gloria already said that she's had to work three times as hard because those bills not going to pay. It's <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes, you know, I was just telling you. Yes, we were just having a conversation uh -huh. about it. It's not easy. It's not. No, it's not. It's not. And it's not even, it, it doesn't make it any easier when you now have, when you're a single mother. So <sighs> you have mm, yourself and thing. someone else mm, to take to care take of, care. right? So it's, you it's, have people that depend on you. But yeah, the Lord is our strength. <laughs> Okay, Gloria, so what did you find for us in the news? Um, so mine is about crude oil theft. Um, some time ago on the show, um, when Uwa was anchoring the show, we talked about um, the impact of crude oil theft on Nigerian economy. Mm -hmm. And someone very prominent came out to say um, the Nigerian Army and Navy were responsible. So mm -hmm. I think this news just goes confirm out to confirm this. that. So it reads, a vessel empty prey. Preso, carrying crude oil, suspected to have been stolen, has been intercepted in the cocoa area of Delta State by Tanita Security Services. The Punch reports on Friday that the empty preso was intercepted on Wednesday, while the 1,117 tons vessel carrying about 8,100 barrels of crude oil was being escorted by some naval officers. Operatives of a private security company owned by Gov. Government Ekpu, sorry, Ekpe Mupolo, <laughs> popularly called Tompolo Tanita Security, said the vessel was flying a Togolese flag, was being escorted by a Navy boat led by a senior naval officer. The Tanita operative said they were met with resistance from the Navy boat escorting the vessel and that the, na the naval commander threatened to deal decisively with them. But the private operative said, anyways, the whole story said, upon entrance into the ship, the security company said it noticed that the vessel was authorized, was, was authorized to carry products by, naval, by Navy, but did not have approvals from the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority. Um, let's see how this goes. So a lot of people have been um, seeing a lot of comments saying that it means what um, um, the story I took the last time about mm -hmm. Asari mm -hmm. laying accusing so it means he he had that truth in what he's talking about. He, yeah, course, he's talking about. I mean could or could or theft is not something that can happen without certain bodies knowing about it. It's not mm -hmm. possible. You can't it's not a pencil where you're just going to steal, right? Yeah. There's a process in the first mm -hmm. place to even up, um, what's it called? Load the vessel and the interest of the vessel even moving, right? So I'm sure that the naval, the army, whatever it's there, they have they are, they are insiders Someone that know. know. Yeah, of course. Someone will have that information. <sighs> well, MJ, <laughs> what did you find for us in this? Well, in the news today, well, going out of Nigeria. Uh -huh. So in Malawi, the police at uh, Lunzu in Bature, Malawi, rescued a newborn baby girl who was buried alive by her 21-year-old mother. So the police uh, relations officer, Sergeant Jonathan Pipilio, who confirmed the incident on Thursday, identified the suspect as Olivia Jonas. So the story behind it is that she was um, eight months pregnant, and at some particular night, you know, she went home, she had the baby. Mm. I don't know how she had the baby, the procedure. So she had the baby and then, you know, took out the baby and went to bury the baby huh. in the shallow grave somewhere near, in the nearby bush. And then, you know, um, definitely there are complications that come with having a, 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 child, a, a yeah. child. So um, her husband arrived home, you know, definitely he'll see the sight and he'll understand she, because she'll be totally unwell and weak. And then they took her to the hospital, and at the hospital, they started to question, you know, definitely nurses see signs, and they know mm. when, you mm -hmm. know. Of course. So, yeah, they start to question her, and then it's revealed that, she revealed at first that, oh, that she had a dead baby, mm. and then she buried the baby, and they're like, okay, you had a dead baby, okay, so where did you bury the baby? 
and then they took the police and then they went all the way there and then so you know that she had buried the baby in a ne uh, nearby bush you know just covered shallows uh, and then they discovered that the baby was still alive oh so um at the at this point she's definitely there's going to be some investigation mm -hmm. you know as to how that whole scenario came about and what led to her making that decision without uh, the knowledge of her husband mm. and family members and who exactly was there when the baby was delivered so i'm sure that there's some investigation going on and at some point there will be some charges flying around because i think she knew that she had a baby of course and for some reason she didn't want that baby to live and um well, knowing fully well that the baby was alive is already a crime in itself. So, but I'm sure that the law would take its course. Oh, I, I don't know why you would even wait that long only to carry yeah. out such an act on an, an innocent child. But you know, child. guys, postpartum depression is, is something that is real. Yeah, that's Best why. Meaning. Especially when you're young and you have a child as, you know. There's so many, so many things could have gone through her mind. We don't even know the relationship between herself and her partner, what it was, what and I'm then saying. she didn't want yeah. the child to, you know, grow up to yeah. face that, you know, hardship or whatever it is that's going up with them at the time. She, I mean, it doesn't justify the fact yeah. that she actually did that, but you know, she might need to be checked mentally. I'm interested also. in knowing who was around. I'm also interested because, or if she did it herself. Yes, it's not impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so my story, hmm, story has been making rounds in the news today. Tinubu removes Shetty for Keyamo <laughs> and Mai Gari on the ministerial nominee list. The other day we had a conversation about the ministerial list. As soon as I saw this today, I, I had too many questions. So, but I think what hurts me the most was this woman had prepared. Oh no, you should have seen her regalia. I saw the video. You saw the video, saw the right? Video. You saw even the video she did in the car where they were praying, how hard she had And then she came and she, down. Cut down and Go to down. then find out that your name has been taken off I think they should, without they should, even should informing her. I really don't know how she must and have thought about it. Must have, have been very sad. Uh, thank you. You know, that's what I said. I, okay, that's the video. I'm like, okay, so this happened. See how we have breaking and, you know, feeling all fly and all of that. And then she gets there and then hears that her name has been taken off the list without no prior information and then you re you replace her with Maigari and Festus Keyamo. Then I saw Festa Ke Festus Keyamo's um, Twitter as well. What was that song he was singing? He I was said singing. Believing God or something, I don't remember. Anyway, so President Bola Tinubu has removed the ministerial nominee by um, Miriam Shetty from Kano North and he replaced her with Keyamo Festus and Dr. Maigari Mahmoud. This was announced when Senate President Goswell Akpabi read out the letter by the President at Friday's plenary. Um, session. Um, this addition announced the total number of ministerial nominees to 48. The reason or the cost for taking out um, Dr. Miriam Shetty is not known yet, but we deserve an explanation. We want to know why this happened. I'm sure we're going to get... And um, also the way it did. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Why she yeah, wasn't like informed as well before. Yeah. Right. So is it like he just woke up and just said, you know, remove that man's name for the list and put this I person? Mean, I really, I, I'm very interested yeah. in this story. I want to know. But yeah, that's not our topic for today. We're discussing <laughs> the impact of media on female sports. But before we do that, let's take a break. Before we bring in our guests, and we'll see you after the break.